fellow cyborgs, time travel. I don't know precisely when this is going to be up, but I'm recording this on the 7th of October because I need to show you some beautiful books and they happen to be Christmas gifts for one of my friends and subscribers who watches my channel. I would have loved to post this before Christmas so that you could add these books to your to buy list for others to buy you things, gifts, whatever, or your Hanukkah wish list. Did I say Christmas wish list? Your, your Saturnalia wish list. Okay, we'll do Saturnalia. But that's not the case because I don't want it spoiled. However, you're getting this, which is nice. I hope you think it's nice. I am so babbling, I'm gonna continue. Welcome to a book cover spotlight. These are gonna happen periodically. Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts does a similar thing on her channel. She's got the beautiful hardcovers, beautiful paperback series, but I thought that in my channel, showing you covers that I think are beautiful would fit lovely in my spotlights playlist. So cover spotlight. I recently discovered some of the most beautiful covers that I have seen in my entire life and I need you guys to know about them. It's a series of books written by Eva Ibbotson, and they were written years ago. So this series was recently released by Pan Macmillan, and the cover designs are by Daniela Terrazini, cover illustrations anyway, and they look like this. Okay, 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 okay. So watercolor plus detail foiling, on the dress or the girls on the front and then on the stuff around her. The spines have the foiling on the name and also on the figure on the spines. The back is also beautiful. Oh my god. Mercedes, I'm looking at you. Watercolor. Watercolor. Uh, so they're just sweet YA middle grade romances, kind of. All of these, they have a female protagonist and she's in her probably mid to late teens. And then a love interest happens. A lot of them also center around World War II because Eva Ibbotson lived through that. That's the jam of these. But I, you know, I haven't read any of them, but just from Eva Ibbotson's other writing that I have read, because I've read various things from her, I think she's a wonderful children's author, is that there's not going to be a lot of angst in this. Like her characters aren't going to be as angsty as maybe some YA characters are these days. So this one, A Company of Swans, says, Harriet has grown up in a home without love where life is circumscribed and ballet her only escape. Promised to a man she doesn't care for, she leaps the chance to join a traveling ballet troupe and, defying her father, runs away with them to the Amazon. There, in a grand opera house deep in the jungle, Harriet performs Swan Lake and falls in love with a mysterious British exile, but her father has tracked her down and he's determined to bring her home, whether she likes it or not. This is the morning gift. Oh my gosh. I actually have a copy of this in my bookshelf, the one that my friend was going to give away, but she said she thought that I would like this storyline the best because it takes place like directly in World War II and there's like thorough cuteness. And whenever I want to read a like romancey sort of thing, I want the cuteness to be immediate and thorough. Ruth's world is turned upside down when the Nazis invade Vienna and her parents flee to London, leaving her behind. She needs to escape and fast. So when a family friend offers a marriage of convenience as a route out of the country, she grabs the opportunity. But Ruth's feelings for studious Quinn take her by surprise, and setting him free once she arrives in England is not as easy as she thought. Here's a song for summer. whoop a doo oh, Just everywhere. Just everywhere. And look at just like the greens, oh, the lilies and the roses. There's sparkles even in the water. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit, you can see a little bit. Second to spine. <laughs> Sorry guys, I know this is a bit awkward. I've got a mic in front of me that's just in the middle of like my arm space, but I want you to be able to see them obviously since this is a cover spotlight. When Ellen Carr swaps gray dreary London for a job in an extraordinary school in Austria, she finds her destiny. Ellen soon falls in love with the Austrian mountains and music, the school's eccentric teachers and wayward children. She is particularly intrigued by Merrick, the mysterious gardener with a dangerous secret. But as Hitler's troops march across Europe, she finds herself making promises which are hard to keep. This is the secret countess, once uh, published under the name A Countess Below Stairs. The trees are absolutely gorgeous. I love trees. If there are trees on the cover of anything, I'll probably want to pick it up. Trees, snow, water, rain. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll be like, oh, what's that? Yeah, those are the those are the keywords that'll get my attention. So, you know, book publishers, you want me to buy your books? There you go. Primer. When revolution tears Russia apart, Anna abandons her identity and homeland for a safe haven in England. She finds shelter there, working as a servant in an aristocratic household. Her luxurious past, now just a distant memory. Until she falls in love with the young Earl of Westerholm and risks revealing her secret. And finally, magic flutes. Oh my gosh, you guys, can you see? Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. Calming down, calming down, calming down. All right, all right. Tessa is a beautiful dark-eyed princess who's given up her royal duties to follow her heart and work backstage at a Viennese opera house. No one knows who she really is or that a fairy tale castle is missing its princess, and Tessa is determined to keep it that way. But secret lives can be complicated, and when a handsome Englishman discovers her backstage, Tessa's two worlds collide. <sighs> ah! There, that's the thumbnail. <laughs> So this is kind of like what they look like in the front collected. All the different colors and such, but still all beautiful. And this is what they, one of the configurations that they would look like lined up together. Right? Right? Who isn't drooling? Well, I mean, people have different preferences. You're welcome to not drool or like this video at all. But I couldn't, I couldn't... I can hardly bear to part with them, but I know it's really stupid to own books just based on the cover, like solely based on the cover. And frankly, I would not have been interested in reading these stories in in their ugly cover format. So that means that I don't need to own them right now. But I couldn't part with them without using my channel for their good because I think that this is how books ought to be published. This is a quality book, like book design. This is... And they're, they're pretty floppy, they're pretty bendy, they smell nice, and this needs to be rewarded. Pan Macmillan, good on you for hiring Daniela Terrazzini to do this because she knows her stuff. And these covers are going to catch a lot of attention, or at least I hope they will because they really deserve it. And Eva Ibbotson also really deserves that attention. So I think it's just a perfect package and... <sighs> please let me know down below, link me to like the epitome of a beautiful book cover for you because I'm really interested in other people's book cover tastes. I don't really quite know precisely what mine is, but I'm trying to figure out exactly what I like. So I would love to hear what you love in a book cover. Thank you for sticking through that with me. I just couldn't let them part from my hands without showcasing them to you because I think they deserve it. Thank, thank, thank you for watching, and until next time, continue to be lovely.